So this is about uh, load uh, balancing. So so now we uh, check uh, my PowerPoint here. Okay. So uh, I would like to ask your permission that. Uh, for the recording, if you are allowing me to record this lecture. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So now we are going to finish our lecture. So, so it's been a uh, a long run for us uh, to finish all of this. So we stuck up in uh, the basic of networking it's to have some foundation in order for you to understand the advanced method so you need to learn the basic first and now we are on the last part we have the server load balancing and uh, this is basically a load balancing we mean uh, uh, when you say uh, load balancing, so we are uh, having to uh, consider uh, hardware uh, or in a private uh, data center, but uh, actually load balancer have evolved often uh, to refer as application delivery controllers. So meaning in order for us to send the uh, data, so, uh, uh, we need the uh, capabilities of security, acceleration, and authentication. So load balancers uh, uh, allows uh, the network to to give us uh, to uh, opportunity to deliver the information in a matter of uh, way that it's not going to have uh, more traffic. So. In this way, so uh, we have a router and switch, and uh, this information travel uh, through on different paths of them. So this uh, packet of information uh, uh, using load balancers uh, uh, simultaneously deliver to different paths. So what is load balancing? Load balancing is to efficiently distribute uh, incoming network traffic across a group of backend servers, also known as a server farm or a server uh, pool. Uh, a load balancer uh, acts as a traffic cup, like uh, sitting on uh, your servers, and uh, the and routing client request across all servers. Uh, capable of fulfilling those requests in a manner that the maximizes the speed and capacity utilization and ensures that no one uh, in the server is overworked. So uh, this would uh, degrade the performance. If a single server goes down, the load balancer redirect traffic to the remaining online servers. When a new server is added to the server group, the load balancer automatically starts to send the request. Now, what are the functions of load balancer? So, uh, first function is uh, it it's, uh, distributes a client request or network uh, load efficiently across multiple servers. So, example, these are your uh, client. So they request via the internet and the load balancer is a software and also it can be a hardware that will allow you to uh, access the application servers. And also one of the function, second function is uh, it allows uh, high availability and uh, reliability by sending requests uh, only to servers that are online. The third uh, function 
is uh, it provides the flexibility to add or subtract servers as demand dictates. So what are the load balancing algorithm that we use? So in the server, we use a uh, So uh, round Ruben uh, requests are distributed across uh, the group of servers uh, sequentially. We have the least uh, connections. So it allows uh, a new request is sent to the server with the fewest uh, current connection to clients. The relative uh, computing uh, capacity of the server is factored into determining which one has the least connection. So it means that if this uh, server does have a few connection, it would be prioritized. Like if you are in the queue, which one in the queue would uh, likely to go? For example, in the department store, in the grocery store. So if you see a big queue or line from people, you will not go there, but you go to the least connection. So you go to the few people instead. So that's how we try to explain a least connection. So the, the, the smaller connection that it has, so it, it, uh, the focus of the server was to allow you to connect on the least connections. Now, for the least response time, and when we say least response time, if you have a queue, and there are in the cashier, for example, if the cashier respond, cashier one responds in three minutes, if the cashier responds in uh, two minutes, which one would you like? So the time that is quick. So instead of going to three minute uh, cashier, so you go to two minute uh, cashier. So. So this based on the cycle or the uh, response time that allows you to uh, uh, to focus your uh, server uh, load balancing. Now we have the uh, fourth uh, balancing algorithm, which is the hash. So it distributes uh, requests based on a key you define. So this is uh, what we call uh, you going to define what is the thing that you require for your server. And in this way, you could be able to uh, limit the client IP uh, address or the uh, request uh, uniform resource loc locator or URL or your web page. And also we have the fifth, we have the internet protocol hash so uh, this is IP address of the client is used uh, to determine which uh, server receives the request. And uh, the last uh, algorithm is we have the power of uh, two random choices. This allows you to pick uh, two servers at random and sends the request to one that is selected then applying uh, the least uh, connection algorithm. So we have, uh, as of this now, to give examples on each. So round Ruben, uh, what are the advantages of round Ruben? So round Ruben is easy to uh, implement and conceptualize. Round Ruben is uh, the most widely deployed uh, load balancing algorithm in the server. Uh, using this method, uh, client requests are routed to available servers on a cyclical basis. So round Ruben server load balancing works uh, best when servers have roughly identical computing capabilities and uh, storage capacity. So the biggest advantage of round Ruben load balancing is that uh, it is, is simple to understand and implement. However, uh, the simplicity of the round Ruben algorithm is also the biggest disadvantage. Why? Because uh, many load balancers uh, use weighted round Ruben or more complex algorithm. So that's uh, the advantage and disadvantage of using round Ruben. How do we do a round Ruben? 
for example, you have this diagram. So a simple way to uh, distribute a client request is across a group of uh, servers. So example, we have application servers from one, two, and three on figure four. When a client request is forwarded to each server in turn, the uh, algorithm repeat it again so uh, what do we mean by this so if example client request one and if you uh, the client request that uh, she needs to uh, select uh, uh, application server three dot two so first which uh, algorithm goes the load balancer uh, take to read from the first one two so this is the job of the load balancer to read the the list and if uh, he identified that this is the one that the user uh, or the client request so it would be forwarded to the user and after that it's going to be returned and again it would repeat uh, the same process uh, that's how around Ruben is a cyclical uh, process in determining the application server. Okay. So we have the second one. We have the least connection. What is least connection? So as we say earlier, so in uh, apl applying it to the diagram, so if you have... Uh, uh, a dynamic load balancing algorithm where the client requests are distributed to the application server with a list of number of active connections. So if the number of connection is few, so definitely uh, you will be uh, given to the least number of active connections. Uh, example, so we have service one, service two, service three. Which one has the least, uh, so least connection here among the three? Which was has the least connection among the three? Anybody? It's my microphone is, oh, okay, okay. Number two, sir. So you have a uh, service number uh, two. Why number two? Because you only have uh, one connection, but as you know, when you have only one connection, more people is going to uh, request. But if you have uh, three and you have uh, uh, four, so which one you will select? So you will select uh, three. So in this example, so there are uh, requests seven on both areas, and uh, there will also be a response uh, in the other side. You going, you are going to uh, go with uh, uh, another example. We have one, two, three, uh, uh, four, five, six, seven. So. Uh, there are uh, zero uh, transaction because it has a uh, very long uh, connection. So if you select uh, this one, it's going to be uh, easier. Although there will be more transaction because they know that you are the least connection. So mostly uh, all uh, uh, number of connection will go to uh, service two. And... Uh, the weight of this also uh, will be considered. So and the second, after uh, considering this, so you go to uh, uh, service uh, and also uh, after we have uh, uh, to discuss the second one, so we go to the third one. So we have the least uh, response time so when the load balancing virtual server is configured, 
So we use uh, response time. So how many responses uh, that we are able to uh, select by identifying the fewest uh, active connections and the lowest uh, average response time. So what we have here, example, uh, how many requests do we have in uh, ser uh, service one? So we Those have four, four to okay. eight requests, four to eight requests uh, on uh, service one and service two, you have how many six. requests? Six. And also you, you have uh, six responses. And uh, for service three, you have only one. one one, two, three, five, seven. Oh, so one, you two, have, three, so you have five. So this one you have five uh, request by using one, two, three, uh, five, seven. So in this case, uh, uh, which one will have more uh, transaction to the server? Ang katatlo, sir. So we have. Ang katatlo, sir. The fewest is the active transaction is we have the uh, last. So you have the active transaction zero. So this would have more responses. And uh, in cases, uh, if you have uh, more responses, but you have only uh, uh, many transaction, it may also contribute that this will not be chosen by the server. But in cases you have uh, only uh, request so you have this one so in the in the other side this one would uh, give you a uh, more uh, server connection active uh, transaction will have seven because you only have what uh ano lang nag request so six so six only request uh in the server but on the other side the uh, five ang nag respond sa so third, uh, only two respond in uh, the first and the second, you have one. So uh, which was a uh, uh, lower uh, response time? So uh, the second, okay? So the second have the fewest active connection and the lowest uh, response time. So because you only request... Uh, 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 number six was request, uh, and uh, on this side, uh, the response will be long if you have so many requests. Also, That's true. okay. So, so the correct answer is this uh, uh, area. It's still the second. So now we go to the. Uh, uh, I think we go to the fifth, okay, second to the last. We have the hash. So how do we uh, uh, perform hash load balancing? So hash are shorter and easier to use than uh, the information that they are based on uh, while they are retaining enough information to ensure that no two uh, different pieces of information generate at the same hash. And uh, therefore, uh, there will be uh, uh, confusion uh, with one another if if you have the same hash. And uh, hashing load balancing methods in an environment where cache serves as a wide range of content from the internet or speed origin servers. Uh, caching request reduces request and uh, response latency and ensures better resource CPU look. Uh, utilization so this is why uh, cash you always allow cash uh, caching in your computer because it all uh, it's already already determined that uh, this is uh, hash one hash two hash three so it would be easier for the computer to identify uh, this uh, location and this server so in this way uh, caching is a uh, popular on heavily used website and application server. So since these sites also benefit from load balancing and hashing load balancing methods are widely useful, especially for 
uh, websites. So in this case, uh, there are bindings of requests, but the most uh, identification that we could see is service uh, two, which has the request and response. So this one is not uh, operating. So only uh, this one is operating, but there is no request and response on this area. But what we have is here on hash two. Uh, on the last part, we have the internet protocol hash balancing. It is uh, using uh, an algorithm that uh, takes the source and destination IP address of the uh, client and server to generate a unique hash key. So this uh, key is used to allocate the client uh, to a particular server as the key can be genera regenerated if the session is broken. So that's the importance of the key. So when uh, something fail or something uh, uh, in the server was not going to uh, operate, so there's uh, the key that, that can be regenerated and this method of load balancing can ensure that client is directed to the same server as this was uh, previously. So this is uh, useful if, if the client should connect to a session that is still active after disconnection and reconnection. Uh, what is an example of an IP hash? So example, if I provided you a Google Meet uh, key, right? So if I don't provide you the code or the key, you could not enter this class because you don't have the key so or the code. And if you have this code, if you disconnect to the lecture because of the internet connection, and when you're going to online, you still going to have it, what? It, it's going to be easier on your part to enter again because you already uh, I already provided you with a key so so it's the same way that you're not going I'm not going now to click uh, allow or admit because if I'm going to do that it's going to be too much uh, time to waste on accepting because I already give you uh, this is accept the uh, admit one uh, admit two admit three so once I admitted you already in the Google Classroom, uh, on, I mean in the Google Meet, on the next uh, time you open the Google Meet because of this connection, so you don't need, I, I don't need uh, you again to be admitted because uh, we are using IP hash in Google Meet. Okay. Now uh, the, we have the last one. We have the power of two random choices. This is one of the oldest uh, method. This was discovered by Mits, uh, Mits and Ma Maker and Richa and Sitaraman. So this algorithm uh, decides uh, which server were, uh, will respond to each request by picking uh, two random servers from the fleet and choosing which one with the fewest active connection. So for example, on this diagram so we have a uh, a b c now we will disregard the time because if we consider time here what uh, load balancing algorithm we're going to use ano gane? we use least uh, response time if we consider time element here but uh, since we are using power of two random choices, so given uh, three choices, you're going to select uh, two random. So, and uh, selecting the two servers, example, this one and this one are two server. So which one uh, would you like to go? So as mentioned, we need to check for the active connections. So how many active connection on this side? So this one, one, two, three, four. So this is uh, four. This one, two, three, four, five. So this is uh, five. So 
So the first one will go to uh, what? So the first two queues at random uh, will choose the better option of the two. So uh, we are going to avoid the worst choice. So that's why uh, in place, if uh, we're going to change this diagram, so we have uh, the first choice on this uh, and we have the second choice on this side. But this diagram is only based on the least uh, remote, uh, least response time. So that's why there is time element on this diagram. But this diagram, I am showing the number of queues that we will consider only the active connections. OK? So that's the power of two. So what are the benefits of uh, load balancing? So the benefits of uh, load balancing are we have to have reduced uh, downtime and it's uh, scalable and we use a redundancy and flexibility and efficiency. Now in this example, this is a application load balancer. So uh, you have option where to prioritize either five or two or zero. So in this case, uh, you prioritize uh, uh, smaller values first, then you go to scan for which one would be uh, better. So first, the scanning will start here, 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 and scanning on the last part. And this allows you to uh, increase your scale to uh, to accommodate other tasks. So that's how a useful uh, application load balancer in several applications. So now we go to uh, load balancing. As a summary, uh, load balancing is the process of uh, distributing workload evenly across multiple servers due to high traffic in websites. So that's why we use server load balancing. A load balancer acts as a traffic cop uh, where uh, uh, it allows you to uh, uh, see uh, which one would uh, uh, be going first. And uh, and uh, you try to check which you're going to allow, uh, which uh, frame you're going to allow. Third, the load balancer performs uh, the functions. Uh, we distribute client request, uh, network load efficiency across multiple servers, ensures high availability and reliability by sending requests only to servers that are online and provides the flexibility to add or subtract servers. And uh, the fourth is a load balancing benefits. Uh, we have reduced downtime, scalable redundancy, flexibility, and efficiency. Now, I'll try to uh, ask for a few minutes for your uh, packet tracer. So we are finished with our last lecture. So for this cycle, so thank you for having in the class for about until uh, our first to eight lectures. So uh, I am going to end the recording and uh,